the one difference and the one point I wanted to raise today, which isn't, isn't too surprising because I think we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. We want to empower people. We want to empower people. And what we do in our charity is we try our hardest to empower the young people from disadvantaged backgrounds who feel like they are underrepresented and underserved by the media. So for that, we ask uh, that the students that get involved uh, either from, we call it pupil premium, which means they get like free school meals and stuff like that. So they're usually uh, from a poorer background. And also uh, I think we have like 65% are black, Asian or uh, minority ethnic and 12% uh, are special educational needs. So yeah, we we try and target, uh, <laughs> target sounds a bit like we're going, oh, it's your turn now. But um, we try and approach, probably a better way of saying it, try and approach uh, young people who need this the most um, and we teach from uh, secondary school so from age 11 or 14 up until we also reach out to up to 23 year olds okay, okay. so yeah so we're going to explain I sort of just explained that so here's a redundant slide because I've already done it but um, I'll go into more details too so uh, TSV is the student view. So we were actually set up by a secondary school teacher because he realized that uh, within the curriculum in the UK, we don't cover it. We don't, uh, it's not something that is approached. Also, we use some of the same data news wise users from Ofcom. We know it's a huge problem and I'm really glad I took that slide out because I would have repeated the same <laughs> stats, uh, which is another thing. We need to get more stats and more data, but um, Ofcom do quite a relatively good job on that. Um, yeah, so as I said, we're one of the leading media literacy charities in the UK and uh, we launched pop-up newsrooms. It sounds... Um, very similar, in, but it's a one-off three-hour workshop where we physically go into the secondary school and uh, we start off with like the first hour or so talking about where news comes from, like what is information, what is misinformation, what is disinformation, and then they spend the last two hours coming up and using data from open source data or from a freedom of information request, and they create their own news story. Uh, so yeah, the charity was launched in April. To, you can read all this, I can read it out loud if you want, but <laughs> it's up there for you to read. Um, but yeah, so really we want to make sure young people can distinguish fact from fiction. We even ask them, like, can you give me a fact? I've had some of the most random facts, like, uh, did you know, and I, I, I had to Google it afterwards, but in Switzerland, you can't just buy one guinea pig, like, you have to uh, verify that you have another guinea pig, because they see it as animal cruelty, I know, interesting, but, and also makes me feel sad for those <laughs> solo guinea pig owners, um, but yeah, we always ask them for a fact, and we always ask them for opinion, just so they can relate, and they can um, really talk about it and why it's important. And yeah, because we're called the student view as well, we want to share their views and they write new stories. Okay, the why, like I said, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. We all want this, right? We all want people to have access to information that's reliable, that they can trust if they, you know, or they can fact check or they can have a look and um, really, you know, delve deep into w why is this information coming up on my For You page or, or et cetera. Like, why are we hearing all of this stuff and who's behind it, which is really what we try and interrogate during the, our pop-up newsrooms. And, uh, yeah, so, and we think that, like I said, I'm, I'm probably repeating <laughs> things everyone said today, but if we want to be part of a democracy and we want to vote for stuff or if we want to be active citizens, we probably should. And uh, I say probably should, we definitely should. Um, and that's why we uh, try teach young people, or we, we discuss. We're, I'm, I never tell people, don't do this, don't do that. We discuss and they come up with the conclusions as well themselves. Right, so yeah, funded by an Eng um, English teacher, The Guardian Love Us, which is great because um, we're sitting on the same panel and we're friends, uh, even though it's separate, but there you go. Um, and we also won a prize for uh, Global Youth and News Media. We, we also train, uh, trained, uh, what was that, more than 2,000. I actually think we've, we've upped that, but there you go. That was the last figures. Okay, so investigations, right? So this is the bit I really wanted to share about because as you can tell with the fact that I've rattled on that bit quite quickly, we're all, like I said, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet or similar. Um, these are the investigations that I want to show off. The, these are original ideas from young people uh, in the UK 
and they've come up with uh, stories based on either freedom information requests or um, open source data. Uh, so one of the biggest stories we wrote, and this was from a 14-year-old uh, girl in London. She came up with this story idea. Uh, she came up with this story idea because she um, unfortunately had a personal experience with it. So uh, I don't know if anyone, do I, need, do I need to explain revenge porn? Does anyone understand what that means? Okay, I can explain, I'm happy to. Uh, so essentially, it's the sharing of uh, explicit images without the consent, or videos without the consent. So uh, one young, young teenager asked, like, can we find out like, how many people have been arrested, how many people have been charged, how many people have got in trouble with the police over it that are under 16. So we um, asked the Met Police, we also asked... Um, around uh, 34 police forces in England and Wales, like uh, how, how many have come forward. And this, this number, while it's, it's unfortunately quite high, there's 500 child victims, and this, these are the numbers that the police know about, right? So actually having a young person go to the police for something so private and so intimate, this figure may be bigger, right? But this, for us, is a very prime example of how these young people can come up with story ideas that can actually go into the national media. And this, this is one of them. Uh, we have other examples. Some of them are slightly, slightly more local. Oh, they're all very local. So one to do with uh, Google data. So this was uh, to do with the GPS data Google holds. And we, we wrote a story about where people went after, after COVID. This is in, in Richmond, which is in London. Uh, we also uh, had a story about how many times the firefighters were called out in Croydon, which is also in London. And um, these were published in both the, so the Richmond Times, the Croydon Guardian, and the final one, which uh, during COVID, um, everyone was told to stay at home, you know, don't interact with other people. I'm sure we, we haven't forgotten <laughs> what that was like. And uh, we uh, did an investigation, or we... Um, found out how many landlords had still tried to get their tenants out of the building, even though by law everyone had to stay in their home. And uh, we wrote a story about how many landlords uh, had actually still tried to do this despite legally not being allowed to. And uh, this was shared with the South London Press. Uh, we have other stories such as like crime stats to do with uh, shoplifting. Uh, we uh, also had uh, from suicide emergency calls to a suicide hotline in Leeds and uh, also things to do with homelessness and rough sleepers. These are just some of many examples of what uh, we discuss and what data sets we look at and um, create new stories. Okay. Uh, we also, which is uh, quite nice, we, we get journalists to actually come to the schools. So I am a journalist, as uh, my past life before I, I started to talk to teenagers. And, um, but we also invite other journalists. We, uh, one of our projects is sponsored by the Financial Times. And here are two of the Financial Times journalists and uh, what they thought about it. We've also had, we've had picture editors come in explaining copyright and why they choose certain photos for news stories. We also have had editors of certain um, very niche business <laughs> magazines because it's the Financial Times and explaining how they choose which stories go in the newspaper. Uh, we've also got this uh, quote as well from the editor of the Times. He was deputy ed editor at the, at, at the time <laughs> and uh, about how he appreciated the workshop when he was there as well. And he, they, they answer questions from the students about what it's like to be a journalist, and they also help them uh, write their own investigations. Okay, and because, like I've showed off, this is what the grown-ups said, now I'm going to say this is what the students said, we all ask them uh, information afterwards, like we are, uh, give them a quiz and a survey, and um, I could rattle these all off, but 92% said they would, they would recommend us, they ranked the usefulness out of 8 out of 10, They 94% said they knew what misinformation was after the workshop, and 71% uh, admitted that they had no idea what these words were before. So I think that's a tick. We've done all right. <laughs> okay, right. So whilst we do this three hour workshop, we then realize that there's more. There's more to it. Like if we want these young people to really have like a lasting impression about the.
involved. We've created this new thing called a, a fellowship, and we are trying to get become content creators themselves. Like they have a, ta a taste of it when they write an investigation um, in the classroom, but after that, we're also launching a six-month program where they will, uh, some, they will go through a training program with the National College for Training of Journalists uh, in the UK, and they will, at the end of it, have a certificate, but also a portfolio. And um, on top of that, they, there's opportunities for um, paid pitches for them to go for, with, for example, with publications like uh, Galdem, which is um, a magazine, online magazine. Right, so this is what we're hoping that we'll, we'll eventually get some of the, the um, reporters from our newsrooms in the classroom to come back into the classroom when they're, they're older and they are now established journalists. Okay, and this is just a suggestion. <laughs> so one thing as a charity that we want is we want to not have to exist. <laughs> I, uh, essentially, I want to not have a job, which is great. Uh, so our suggestion is uh, we think every young person should be equipped with the skills uh, they need to determine truthful, reliable, and trustworthy information online. So we think, as a bare minimum, this should be part of like the national curriculum in schools. Every child or every young person should know about this, right? Our, my, our charity would not exist if there wasn't a need for it.